Now our fourth uh, feature and the last one that supports continuous data types is the kolmogorov smirnov test. Uh, and important thing here, it, it's a statistical measure. It's not a distance, uh, which means that you cannot do all the nice things that you can do with uh, mathematical distances, uh, but it provides you with the statistic and uh, the actual p-value, uh, which might be useful to determine the significance, at least from statistical perspective. And the intuition is again, extremely, extremely simple. Uh, we're here, instead of the shaded area between those two, it's just the maximum distance of the cumulative distribution functions. Um, so here we just look at where they differ the most in terms of CDFs, and we just take the maximum of that. That means that it's not so sensitive to outliers, of course. It also means um, that, uh, if there's some kind of weird changes in the data where your maximum distance between uh, CDFs stays the same, uh, but the functions still change, uh, KS test is gonna be blind to that. It's not gonna be able to capture that kind of change. Um, and as most statistical tests, if you uh, basically determine the significance or the alerts by uh, the p-value, it's gonna be very prone to false positives, especially in bigger samples. If your sample size is, let's say 500, which is normal for a chunk, let's say you do monitoring weekly uh, or you do monitoring daily or even hourly, it's quite likely that you will have 500 or more um, samples in your data. Uh, you will almost get almost always get statistically significant change, but that does not mean that this change is significant from the monitoring perspective. Uh, so that's why it's potentially prone to false positives but we have a way to uh, ways to work with that. And it outputs both the, our this statistics, so our um, kind of a divergence statistic and the p-value, uh, which you can use then to determine statistical significance. And the results here, uh, as I mentioned, we don't have to rely on p-values to determine the alerts. We can still just have a threshold. And here, uh, instead of setting up the threshold that's based on um, specific number, we can also, as I mentioned, uh, set it on um, the standard deviation value and the default threshold for KS test is the actual pre-standard deviations of the test statistic on the reference data. And you see here that we only have one alert. Uh, so we kind of get rid of a lot of false positives. And I'll show you later on what happens if we instead decide to go with p-values.